A number of years ago I got a new camera for Christmas, just a simple point and shoot camera but with, a, with quite a good zoom to it. And the day after Christmas I went out to the salt pond to test out the camera and there were a lot of birds around that at that point of time I only knew was big white birds. Took pictures of them, uh, took that back home, put it out on the computer and I could really see the details on the birds and I was really amazed by it and taken away by how, by how beautiful the birds are. And at that point I realized I was not, not comfortable with just calling them big white birds and I wanted to know the name of those birds. Mangroves are on both sides of the piece of pond there and it's very easy to see night herons there for instance and uh, egrets, brown pelicans, they sit there. You easily find between 80 and 100 pelicans on a daily basis there, uh, just liming as we say here. Uh, feeding because there's a lot of fish in the pond and it's easy to catch for them. They, they barely have to dive for it. You see them sometimes also swim around and just, just scoop it up. I always see the pond in a kind of luminous way uh, where the white, the grey, pink, greenish color, where we're really always mysterious. Basically the salt that is here on St. Martin is an iconic aspect of the totality of our history. It goes all the way back to prehistory. Yes, we uh, visit the uh, Great Salt Pond during our history tour. It's our first stop. So what we do is we go up to a viewpoint in uh, Bloomingdale Estate, it's called now, Hope Estate, that area just before you go to Guana Bay. And we look out over Great Salt Pond and I show people a photo that has been taken end of 1800s, beginning of 1900s, and they can see on the photo what it looked like before. So the entire pond, Phillipsburg just being a narrow strip, and then they look at the pond as it is today. When I was young, of course, the Great Salt Pond was a lot, uh, a lot different than when it is now. I mean, we're talking, um, you know, from when I can remember, I'm 34 now, so I guess about 28, 29 years ago. Uh, it was a lot larger, of course. It was a lot less polluted. Uh, although at that time we still had, uh, we already had the um, the Phillipsburg landfill, but it was in no way as large and as out of control as it is now. The Foga ruins, the beautiful, spectacular ruins with the steam engine and everything. Some of the iron gears and parts are still out there. It has actually been filled in so much around it that there's no longer even a water access between the pumping station and the pond or the dike or the canal. So it's just stagnant water now. Yeah, sure. I mean, my ancestors, my, my great great grandmother uh, and my grandma, my great grandmother also to a certain extent uh, used to work at the salt factories. So they used to uh, collect and pick the salt um, when it was still one of the main economic drivers of, of the economy of St. Martin. One of the plans is to create what we call the uh, salt walk. And the idea is to build wooden catwalk systems that actually go out, not over the salt pan walls, because we don't want to damage them, they would be parallel. And one of the ways that we can show the direct role of individual St. Martins in the heritage of salt on St. Martin is that along the salt walk, we'd like to have it like every 10 meters, a little sign that would simply have the name of a salt worker. Our cultural identity does not have to be composed uniquely of things that are no longer. You know, the great salt pond makes us what we are. We are still, you know, as, as I've heard people say before, we are children of the salt. It, it, it's a bunch of mixed feelings altogether. I'm still, even though that, that, that huge garbage mountain in the middle and all, it's just, that, that hurts to look at it, but at the same time there's still so much beauty in all kinds of corners there.